Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In today, the third episode in our series on emulation, we'll be looking at the Sega Mega Drive, or as it was in the US, Sega Genesis. Now that distinction only exists because in the States, Sega could not secure the Mega Drive copyright and therefore settled on Genesis as a name for the console. Across the rest of the world, this is simply known as the Sega Mega Drive. Now I was quite late to the Sega Mega Drive party, only getting hold of a Sega Mega Drive version 2, not quite as pretty as the original, and I always regret not having had one at the start. The games are classics, back to Sonic all the way through, and as the first 16-bit console, the Mega Drive really set the scene for the 90s onwards. Although released initially in Japan in 88, the Mega Drive's heyday was through to around 94-95, when the Sega Saturn came out as a successor. Having stolen a march on Nintendo with 16-bit, this really was THE console for the early part of the 90s, and all the classic titles I remember from my youth, with the exception of Street Fighter 2, really sit on the Sega Mega Drive. So, let's get into some emulation. To emulate the Sega Mega Drive, I've chosen to use the Kegi Fusion standalone emulator. This is available in RetroArch, and if you want to know how to set up RetroArch, I have a previous video where I set up the PlayStation in 4K you might want to have a look at. There are other options for the Sega Mega Drive and its complementary consoles, Virtua 2X, the Sega CD, but for me, Fusion is the best option. Now, of course, you will need some games. As ever, I'm not able to tell you in a YouTube video where you might find them. Again, if only there were a helpful website that might have some references to where you might find games and BIOSes. Anyway, as you can see I have a series of folders here with a number of games for the Mega Drive, Sega Verge 2 x Game Gear and the Sega CD. But first of all, let's download the Cake Fusion emulator. So I've left a link in the description below to this page. The Cake Fusion emulator emulates all of the Sega Mega Drive and its component parts, as well as the Master System. SG-1000 and a few other earlier consoles. So we'll just download this, it won't take a second. Now we'll just open it up from our downloads folder, put it onto our desktop freeze, and I'll quickly unzip the file. Delete the zipped version. And we can get started with the emulator. So it's pretty simple. Just click on the Fusion folder and click the execute file. And here we are. So first and foremost, go into the video section. This is where we can set it to different variations on full screen, which we'll come back to. But first of all, set up a pad. Now you must make sure whatever pad you're using is connected before you start the emulator. Otherwise, when you get to this point, it will not be on the drop down menu. So now we've selected my Xbox One controller. We'll just make sure we set up a six button controller and then define that by pressing up, down, left, right, etc. Now you can use your analog stick, works perfectly well with this. Of course you have no variation in movement, but it, it works as a D-pad and that's what I've chosen to do. Pretty straightforward. There we go. Okay, now we're going to put our BIOS into the folder. We'll just quickly put that onto where we had our Fusion Execute file. Then go back into Kegi Fusion and this is where you map your BIOS. You only need to map the Sega CD BIOS, all the rest don't require a BIOS to work, um, but as you'll see when I go into my folder, I've amassed over the years all of the relevant BIOSes just in case. So there's our BIOS folder, just need the bottom one here, which is the US version of the Sega CD. We'll select that, click open, and that's now mapped in. Brilliant. Apply those, all those settings are now saved. Now we can load some games. So we'll start with, what else would we start with? Once I can find my games and Sonic the Hedgehog. As you can see, I have pretty much the whole back catalogue here for the Sega Mega Drive. The games themselves aren't very big, so you can hold this on any sort of disc without taking up much space. Um, although as ever, you end up having far more games you never play. Classic. So we'll just click video now and go into full screen resolution, full screen mode, and here we go. Now once you're in full screen, if you right click your mouse button, you call up the menu again, and you can select what you want to do. But let's get going. Looks just like days of old. Perfect speed, 60 frames a second. 
and you can play this on anything. I mean, you can play this on a Raspberry Pi, so it's not difficult to emulate in terms of computer kit. Um, but I think the, the Kega Fusion of the PC just gives you lots of scope to muck around. Right, let's see if I can get through this unscathed, and then we'll have a look at something else. Oh, there we go, still got it. Wallop, job done. Okay, so we'll have a look at something now, I think, on, on the Game Gear. Now, I really like the fact you have a sort of picture of the Game Gear as if you were holding it in your hand. Again, for comparison, I've sold, I've settled on Sonic. Now, you must remember, which I failed to do, set up your controller separately for the Game Gear in the same config file. Well, we've done that now, so let's get playing. As I remember, effectively the Sega Game Gear was the Sega Master System but in mobile form. So obviously the graphics aren't quite as good as the Mega Drive, um, but it's still worth a bit of playing if you had one back in the day. Um, and the fact you can emulate it just means you probably want to have a go. But there we go, proved the point. Let's have a look now at some Sega CD. Hope the BIOS works. Now the Sega CD games are really quite large, so I've only put a few into this folder. Again, we'll choose Sonic the Hedgehog. So we have three ages of Sonic. Fantastic stuff. The Sega CD had slightly better 3D graphics. Well, not really 3D, just a bit more power for processing. And it was able to do a few things that the, the flat Mega Drive couldn't. Also, the great thing about the Sega CD was the soundtracks, which of course being on a CD format were far better anything that came out of the cartridges. There we go, a slight variation for Sonic. Classic stuff. It certainly feels a bit smoother and looks a little bit nicer on the Sega CD, I have to admit. I've never had one of these when they're out, but now you've seen them, I think it's, it's probably a game you want to have a go at. If you want to have a go at Sonic, this is probably the version on the 16-bit consoles to have a dig at. A few more bits and pieces going on, slightly nicer looking. I quite like the running up the wall bit. If I can do it properly. <laughs> I'll try that again. We're all transparent here on the Count Beans channel. No hiding our mistakes from our viewers. We're crap at gameplay, but we love it anyway. Follow up, job done. Fantastic. Just for completion, we'll have a quick look at a Sega 32X game. And there isn't a Sonic variant for Sega 32X, so I've opted for something else that I remember. Now I come to think of it, I may have done the SNES a disservice. The Star Wars games on the, the SNES were really fantastic, um, so it wasn't just Street Fighter 2. Credit rates due and all that. We might have a go at this there's another day, and of course there was Mario Kart. What am I saying? Mario Kart is a classic. Anyway, here we are. Sega Fox 2X. Um, yeah, this looks pretty smart. Again, I never had this I never bought this particular accessory for my Mega Drive. Um, it's good to have a look at now you can. Um, some of the games are slightly enhanced. I think to be honest, the price of the day was a bit excessive for what you were getting. Um, but so a couple of games you want to have a look at before you want to try as a kid, why not have a go now? Lovely stuff. Okay, well that's it really. There's not really much to add to this. It's great fun to emulate. The Kega Fusion emulator is really straightforward. As I said, there are some slight variations um, on RetroArch you can use. And there is a peculiarity around the Sega CD and the particular files you have to have for Kega Fusion. If you get hold of CHD files, you won't be able to use this. Uh, but I have the bin and Q files, um, which are fine and work really well with Fusion. I hope you've enjoyed this run through the Kaylee Fusion emulator. If you did, give us a like. If you didn't, give us a dislike. Feedback is a gift. Please leave a comment. This is a weekly series we'll be doing, so if you want us to emulate any other consoles from back in the day, or you've had a particular problem with a, an emulator, let us know and we'll have a look at, at what we've done and maybe we can give you a, a bit of a guide. In addition to the emulation, we have a a monthly new build and a monthly old build PC guide. 
uh, and this will be regular so please do consider subscribing thanks for watching until next time go well <laughs>